In this video, we'll be looking at how to set up the Apollo client, use the use query hook, and then use the use mutation hook to send mutations to a GraphQL API and trigger a refetch query. If you've already seen the video on how to set up the Apollo client and use the use query hook, you can fast forward to the five minute and 45 second mark. We'll start off by creating a new React application called Apollo Hooks App. Next, we'll install the dependencies. We need to install Apollo Client, Apollo Cache in Memory, Apollo Link Context, Apollo Link HTTP, GraphQL, GraphQL Tag, and the new at Apollo slash React Hooks at Beta. If you're watching this video and the Apollo React Hooks library is out of beta, you can just install at Apollo slash React Hooks. After everything has been installed, we'll open the application and our text editor. The first thing we'll do is open index.js and import our dependencies. Here we'll be importing Apollo Client, in memory cache, set context, create HTTP link, and Apollo provider. Next, we'll create a new HTTP link by calling create HTTP link and passing in the URI of our GraphQL API. If you need to send headers to your GraphQL endpoint, create an auth link and set your header properties. Next, we'll create our client variable by calling new Apollo client and passing in the link and the cache property as new in memory cache. If you do not have an auth link, you can just pass the HTTP link as the link property. Finally, we'll create an Apollo app component, passing in the client as the client into Apollo provider. In React DOM.render, we'll replace the app component with our new Apollo app component. Next, we'll open app.js and import GQL from GraphQL tag and use query from at Apollo slash React hooks. Next, we'll create a variable called query to place our GraphQL query. In the app function, we'll use the useQuery hook passing in the query to return the data and the loading state from the query. We'll check to see if the data is loading, and if it is, we'll return a message that lets the user know that the data is loading.
Finally, we'll map over the items array returned from the query, returning the item name and item description. Next, we'll run npm start to launch our app. When the app loads, we should see our items render to the screen, and when we refresh, we should see a loading message. Now that we have queries working, we'll go back into app.js and import the use state hook from React and the use mutation hook from Apollo slash React hooks. Next, we'll define our GraphQL mutation in a variable called mutation. We'll be creating a form, so we'll need a way to hold the values from the form input. To do so, we'll create two new pieces of state, one called name and one called description. Next, we'll set up the use mutation hook. The return value from the use mutation hook that we'll be using is going to be a function called create taco and an error to check to see if there are any errors in our mutation. For the first argument to use mutation, we'll pass in our mutation definition. The second argument to use mutation will be the variables that we're passing into the mutation. The third argument to use mutation will be the refetch queries that we'd like to call after the mutation has been successful. Next, we'll check to see if there are any errors, and if there are, we'll log them out. Finally, we'll create our form with two inputs and a button that, when clicked, we'll call Create Taco. Next, we'll launch the app by running npm start. If we try to send a mutation with an empty input value, we'll notice that the GraphQL error has been logged out to the console.